I'm Corinne. I'm Thomas. Good morning, or good evening if you're a third shifter. <laughs> Welcome to the chill spot. I'm Drake, and this is Corinne. Good afternoon. Yeah, yeah what, what yeah. do you say to third shift people? That's always something when I work second and I would leave, you want to greet them, but if you say good night, that sounds like they're going to bed. Right. And it's past evening, and it's definitely not morning. So it's always something I wondered I about. That and then at six in the morning, you say to them, good night. Yeah, that's got my mind just uh, working <laughs> overboard right now. Like, what, what is the proper way to greet them? Hello? So, yeah, so we'll just say, third shift, welcome to the chill spot. Yeah. Glad to have you. So, actually, today is we celebrate night shift. Night owl day or something? Yes, yes, night owls is, is what they're referred to. And it's actually the shift... Um, that keeps the world turning while everyone else is asleep. It's true that, you know, I have a strong belief that third shift is undervalued and underappreciated everywhere. I have done staffing in buildings and I actually talk with Matt about this often. I made it my goal for my strongest shift to be overnights. And sometimes people think, you know, it's overnights. All they're doing is rounds. That is a very minimum to the other tasks they have of restocking, right. cleaning, and they don't have the support of the management being there right? or the other department heads. So it's just them. So that's why I'm like, third shift has to be a strong shift. And I did third for a while. It's not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so mostly you're, it seems like most of your individuals that do work that third shift, that night shift, they have to do a lot of problem solving on their own. Yes, yes. So they do need to be very strong um, individuals. But, however, you know, working that shift, as you did, there's a lot of health problems that come along with that shift. And one, of course, would be your sleeping disorders. And that's the most difficult thing. People say, why'd you leave third shift? Well, I liked third because I knew I was a strong enough CNA to work third. And I can make these judgment calls and stuff like that. But I'd get off work at 6 in the morning. I would stay up till about 10 a.m. And then I'd sleep all day. So I'd lose my whole day. Every day. So for me, I definitely had some sleep disorder going on, something I couldn't sleep. Or I slept too much was the thing. And then the other one is um, you become diabetic. And I can kind of see this because, again, your poor eating habits. So if you get off work, are you actually going home to eat dinner like a, right. a day shift person? Right. Or is that your breakfast? Yeah. Third shift, I've noticed a lot of third shift people. It is fast food and... Sometimes frozen food more times because not a lot of fast food places are open on overnights when they take their lunch break, for example. They can't just run up to Panera or something like that. They're very limited, maybe Taco Bell in the gas station. Right. So you can not You can find healthy foods at a gas station. You really can. A lot of those hot dogs on that ugh. turner. <laughs> <laughs> you, exactly. And that's what they'd end up eating because the, the few healthy foods you can find, like a, a cup of grapes in a gas station, six bucks, get out of here. I would right. never pay that. Right. So I myself ate worse on third shift as well. I could see that. And then the other thing is mental health. And you have a lot of strong individuals, like we just mentioned a mm -hmm. few minutes ago about a lot of problem solving, but they seem to struggle the most with missing out on family time, socialization during the day, and also um, missing out on the daylight, yeah. getting their vitamin um, D from it. For sure. that And that makes sense. There's not, if you want to sleep, if you say you get off on a Monday morning and you have to work Tuesday night... But you have obligation, or Monday night, you know, you just have to go back to work 16 hours later. You don't have much time to sleep for eight hours and then do any obligations that you have to do because it's really early in the morning or late in the evening. So third shift people do tend out to miss out. They do tend to miss out on a lot of family obligations, maybe get togethers with their friends and stuff like that. Right. And one of the biggest um, complaints that we hear in our facility is they miss out on a lot, a lot of the celebrations. Yeah, that happened in the building, you mean? Yeah, yep. that happens a lot. Um, so 
especially with CNA week coming up, um, if you're planning any events, please try to make it where all three shifts are included or at least feel, mm -hmm. you know, like they're, they're part of the team. A good thing like pizza, you know, that's a common thing that nursing homes will do to recognize their staff, order them pizza for lunch. And you see about 11 o'clock in the daytime, pizza's delivered. About 4.30 in the evening, pizza's delivered. Follow through with that. Yes, the pizza place most likely is going to close before lunch break of third shift. Have the pizza delivered at the beginning of their shift. And that's what I would do. It's so easy to go online, place the order, and then just have it delivered. Let somebody on third know, hey, pizza's going to be there for you guys. And that little show of appreciation will go a long way to that shift. Right. And another thing that they mentioned when I was looking this up and everything, they said that injuries were uh, increased on night shift. I kind of disagree with that because I think if you're not paying attention, no matter which shift you're working, you're going to have injuries. Do you think maybe the injuries, injuries, I can't talk today, the injuries on night shift are at a higher number because there is less help? You don't have anyone to, not that you don't have anyone, but you have less people to assist you. So those third shift people are more independent and yeah. they attempt to do more things by themselves because they're used to that. So working on the floor, both of us, you know, a lot of third shift is changing people. So you're rolling right. them in bed. Mm -hmm. It Injuries happen more often than we believe just from that motion of rolling, that pushing and holding them over. And I wonder if that's what it is. That's the, probably... The lower amount of help on overnights means that the CNA has to do more strenuous labor on their own. Right. It really didn't give a definition, but hearing you say that, yeah. that kind of makes makes sense. So if you're working third shift, um, just try to farm um, good habits if mm -hmm. possible. But that goes to every shift. Yeah. You know, make good habits. Um, but most of all, um, just... Thank you for willing to work that shift. Yeah, thanks to everyone that'll work third and everyone that's worked third in the buildings that I've worked in, because it wasn't for me. <laughs> so I'm glad that there are people willing to do it. And the people that do work third tend to stick to third. Yeah. You know, sometimes we hear when we say we're a CNA and they say, oh, it takes a special person. Well, we've talked about that. And I really think it takes a special person to work overnight. Oh, definitely. You know, I was a first shift guy. I started on second shift. Then I went to days. Then I went to third. I learned third wasn't for me. I did third because of school, right. though. So it works for some people, and some people have to do it for other certain reasons. But the people that that's their shift preference, that's what they love to do, thanks to you. And kudos to you for being able to have a routine that you can still have a life and work third shift. Right. <laughs> I I also want to throw out there that I've noticed, um, especially in our facility, and I'm sure it was it for your facility too, but it seems like the night shift crew is more connected oh, yeah. with each other than day shift mm -hmm, or, or mm -hmm. evening shift. So I think that's pretty special. It is. It definitely you know, is. Very special. And one other thing, we were talking about this earlier, um, kind of off the subject, but um, this year you and Johnny are doing something different about some pins. Oh, yes. Yes. And I'm going to mention that on a few different episodes. So with CNA week coming up in June... Yes, yes, June. June. I knew that. June. I Yay. just need some reassurance. <laughs> um, we want to offer custom buttons mm -hmm. to the centers, you know, to recognize your CNAs. Third shift rock star, you know, it could say yeah. one of that or anything you wanted customized on a button. That would fit, of course. There are some parameters. You'd have to work with myself or Johnny to see what could go on there and what would look good. We're not going to print 50 buttons for someone right. and end up looking bad. Right. But we'll do custom buttons for your center, and they're due, the orders are due By on May, May the, 20th. The May the 20th, yes, to make sure that you have them. Now, if they want to purchase that afterwards, they probably could, but for CNA week, Correct. they need to be by uh, May the 20th. And yet, we set that at May the 20th, so then that will give us time to produce them and ship them out and get them to your home before CNA week actually starts. So if that's something you're interested in, you can feel free to email me or call the office at, and let us know what you're looking for. We can even give you some ideas if you're just like, well, that's a great idea, but I don't know what I'd put on there. Call us. We'll give you some ideas. And it's just another token of appreciation you can give to your CNAs. When I'm out in the field, that's the number one thing I like to put in my grab bag. Right. The buttons. One of the buildings in Springfield that Care Force Lead is working with, the CNAs still wear the buttons every day that we gave them five months ago. Good. That's cool. That lets you know that... 
they appreciate exactly. that what you gave yeah. them, you know. And this is something that is is safe for your residents. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to be, it's not going to be hanging down where they can grab a hold right. of it, you know. And it's something that you can wear at your facility or even out in the community that says, hey, you know, I'm that rock star. Exactly. Our CNA matter. But um, reach out to them. Um, Johnny actually did a button for LaShondra and I, and it's where she won one of the key equality yes. awards in Washington, D.C. And I love it. Um, it's something special that's going to hold that special memory. So um, kudos to, to the night owls out there. And whether you're going to be eating dinner and watching us, but are eating breakfast. <laughs> Let us know in the comments, yeah. you know, what is your routine for third shift? When you get off work, is that dinner time or is that breakfast time? When you wake up in the evening, mm -hmm. is vice versa. Is that dinner time? Is that breakfast time? Just in the comments of this video, let us know what what's your routine for third shift. What did you do when you started third shift to ensure you were getting enough sleep, you know, to ensure that you would have time to do personal things, hang out with your friends, hang out with your family, and then share this video and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't. But I ask that you share this video so other third shift people can see that we are taking the time to recognize third, recognize third right. shift because we know it's not the easiest thing to do. Right. So thank you. And uh, remember that uh, you matter.